Welcome everyone to today's video. To continue with this just done T3 SSD upgrade, actually that I have only done to show you the teardown and how to upgrade it. Actually my plan is why I brought this terabyte is to upgrade this Mac. This is still my daily driver, although it's getting three to maybe even I guess soon four years old. And the problem is, as I said many times, the Macs do not fit to me anymore. They are thermal throttling. Even this one is enormously thermal throttling. The new ones have two little ports, no USB-A that I still use for daily stuff, and not the Mac safe, and so on. So I think in total they have like at least, so we have four here and HDMI, yeah, they have maybe effectively two ports less and no SD card that I in the beginning never used, but now I use it daily for YouTube video importing. The new keyboards are awful and I do not even like the new oversized trackpad and so on and so on. Besides, I'm not even so satisfied with this one. As I said, thermal throttling. I never liked the aluminum. Even when I had iBooks 15 years ago, I had the plastic iBooks because I liked the plastic more. I also said many times this gives me electric fizz here, especially using it in countries other than Germany like France, Russia, UK, Taiwan, USA and such. And this is really annoying to try to concentrate on work and get electric shocks typing, uh, shocks at least some electric fizz, annoying enough. So, and the thing is, so this is relatively maxed out. I think I paid over 3,500 euro for this when it was new, obviously. So Apple never gives discounts anyway. So this was quite maxed out. 16 gigs of RAM, which was, I guess, the highest upgrade. And I think the highest storage, um, Serial ATA, I guess here. So that has 500 gigabyte. That was quite expensive and quite a premium. And I guess the biggest they would sell. And I went to the Apple store next street a year or two ago and I offered them thousands of euro to sell me a, or install me a compatible SSD. And they said, no, it's impossible. They don't do it. It's, it's not only they don't do it, they said it's impossible and so on. And this is my problem with Macs and why I'm not a fan of this anymore. And by the way, this A also, if you really use the Macs, I took quite some care, but you see my A is already mostly gone. That is when you type also what I noticed from the beginning. The case is relatively okay, only slightly scratched. Just what you get after four years of use. It has a little dent somewhere here at the bottom. There is a very minor dent. Somehow, maybe something pressed there during a flight into my back or something. And what's also annoying, I noticed immediately when you people say Apple gives so much attention to detail, what I noticed immediately is when you open this, you often scratch here on this rubber. You even see it there. And you often press it there while opening. This is one of the more defect places here, although it's now, you see there, this rubber is already quite pressed and I noticed this on the very first day. I don't believe the story that Apple gives too much attention to details when I see this. The thermal throttling and uh, the new keyboard is awful, this keyboard, um, because this is also etched in here or something, so you see how much my A is gone there. Even here, the arrows also, so much to the Apple quality. But enough of Apple ranting. The point of this video is, while some vendors sell you a matching SSD, because of course Apple is so nice, they used a serial ATA flash, but Apple would not be Apple if they would not have changed the pin. So you cannot physically fit it in there. And instead, there are SSDs, but I do not want to pay this overpriced third-party SSD. So there is also an adapter for 15 or so bucks that converts this M SATA to this 2012 and such MacBook Retina Pro thing. And I hope that works. So you take this adapter, so there are matching SSDs, so not from Apple. It's of course also ridiculous that even if I give Apple 1000 or 2000 euro or dollar, they would not install me a bigger one. And in the new ones, the SSD flash is even soldered to the logic board. You will never, unless you hot air solder this off, be able to change it. 
the next reason why I don't buy the new ones. So we take this SSD, plug it in there, plug this adapter thing into the Mac and hopefully have a terabyte upgrade to this Mac. A reason why I plugged this into this USB adapter is that I first want to copy everything over um, to adapt this Apple thing to this one. So once I get this out, I cannot access my data anymore. So I first need to copy this over, for example, to this one, and then I screw it in there. So, right, I forgot we are professionals. Let's see what we got here. Maybe this also came with Pentaloop. Really fragile screws, I guess. Normally you should even change them after one time use. So, and from what I remember, the only other first time I pried this open, there are two retaining clip-like things and I guess this is to be moved left or right or so, because the last time I was pulling, nothing really moved. And only when I had it off, I realized the solders may have to be, because this is nothing like the Lenovo. Not only does the Lenovo ThinkPad have no has normal screws that you can use with any normal screwdriver, even when you're on holiday or such. Here, beside on the new ones, you can't service anything anyway. Even the old ones, you have it hard to. Here, here's these things. Okay, maybe they just are to pull off whatever. Quite a bit new dust though. So I cleaned this not too long ago. Yeah, this was quite clean. Why is there new stuff inside? Hmm. So anyway, so our storage is here, which ironically is also Samsung. Here's the original one. Just that this one is using a special Apple Snowflake adapter thing where we need this adapter PCB for. And Pentaloop. Hmm. Pentaloop or not Pentaloop? It's not really moving so. Uh, two millimeter pentaloop. Hmm. It's getting slightly tiresome. For apple screws us. This T5 fitted better, but does it not look pentaloop? So and as you can see this is not T5, now I wonder. Why does it look slightly... so this is not the right adapter though. Shit, it was written for this. So they changed it in the meantime. Hmm. That's a bit of a fail now for tonight. Okay, let's order another adapter I guess. While we are at it, let's quickly check what flash connector Apple used on this MacBook Air and of course as usual this is an homage to the people of Twitter who argue with me that I have no clue about Macs and say they don't believe me that I had more than 20 Macs. Here is the next Mac that you may not have yet seen on, fuck, on YouTube. Oh, no longer. I find they really snap over easily. I would really prefer every other screw over this pentaloop nonsense. Surprisingly clean, much cleaner than my Retina 15 inch also. This is older, I think this is probably two years older. 
and this is how it looks inside. As you see, not much to service except wireless module and the flash. And again on the new Max, we don't even get that anymore. Sure enough, that is a different connector. This, no, this also doesn't fit unbelievable. That is yet another one. As you can see, this is yet another connector. They really each year and model change this stupid flash connector. This is ridiculous. For what reason would they do this except making sure people can't switch this out to another one? They eventually like to. It's ridiculous. So I can't even move the old one from the retina over here to upgrade this one. So the same size. Let's say we create long screw damage here. I think they look all the same, except the two. Even new to me, I knew they were Apple proprietary, but I thought they are the same between Air and Retina. Where does this not? So I hope you learned something, as even I do on my own videos here. Finding things that even I did not expect in this specific way. Don't forget to share, like and subscribe. And I hope to see you soon for all the next videos to come. So yeah, but it still works, so so much for that I need to order another adapter. So taking a closer look to Apple's proprietary SSD connectors to order the right one, here is an ultimate guide. And you can see there are as many and even I did not realize this until today. So the first ones of course was Serial ATA, SATA technology. Over the time of course came NVMe and Apple of course upgraded this to PCIe, PCI Express. And so I'm a little bit unlucky. Here's generation one MacBook Air, the very first one. Of course, M Sater. Generation two, also still serial ATA, I think, as seen a second ago in my video. The first Retina. I think this one I had, I only got the new one and sold this because it couldn't do 4K with 60 Hz. And so this was probably the adapter I just had in my hands, I guess. So many adapters. So with Gen 3 they improved the speed from MSATA to PCIe and I'm a little bit unlucky because they have used a really stupid technology in that this flash was PCIe connected but internally used an serial ATA interface. So it was PCIe connected but had an whole AHCI serial ATA controller on, on this PCB. And unlucky because now if I order this adapter, this, this SSDs are extremely rare. I'm surprised there were even third party ones. So for my specific Mac, I would need this extremely rare M2 PCIe SSD with AHCI serial ATA controller. Extremely rare, there were only two or three models or so made. I will not even tell you which to 
not further increase the eBay prices. <clears throat> yeah, after this came PCIe and you see the very flavors continue. There's always uh, the width a little bit different, the width and height and this and that. And then even this kind of PCIe connectors. And you see really many, many, they basically for each and every model and year change this proprietary connector. This is ridiculous and in my opinion, not only me, but many other professionals no longer want to buy a new Mac anymore because this is just ridiculous what Apple have done over years. And again, when I had iBooks and Power, well, actually, I never had a PowerBook. I think I had iBooks and um, and the G5, and later I used Cube, and they were all about standard conformance. They even had open firmware, and basically everything was about open standards, and that's not what Apple is anymore. The funny thing about my is I found here on Stack Exchange of all sites, they write here exactly this. And I need to scroll quickly over this, not to show you the overpriced expensive special SSDs to order. And so there is a Zintech adapter and another one made in China or Taiwan, of course. So what is interesting, as I said, mine was serial ATA connected and in a way, I'm a little bit lucky that with some macOS update, Apple published actually an EFI BIOS upgrade. I actually noticed this when I installed it for APFS's Apple file system support. I actually noticed that it was flashing there something. And these people here write that this update, I did not even know this, this update included support for NVMe. So here basically just recently, High Sierra. macOS High Sierra, Beta 9 and Golden Master brings a boot ROM update for all Macs supported by High Sierra so that they can boot from APFS drives. The very, 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 very really good news is that this update also brings NVMe boot ability on every Mac back to the Mac Pro 6.1. And the only problem with this is, so with this I could indeed majorly upgrade my Mac with a much faster modern NVMe SSD. However, there are two problems. The first problem is they write here already, this is not stable, probably not really intended by Apple to use this. Maybe it only slipped in by accident within the code base. It, this module was available, so it was just built in or so, recompiling this EFI BIOS. And they write here somewhere that it won't wake from sleep. Okay, someone writes he has not encountered the sleep-wake problem. Here, unfortunately, the stock EFI firmware, the system ROM, in this MacBook comes with an NVMe driver that prevents the MacBook from waking up from hibernation or deep sleep. That is of course a little bit of a showstopper. Also, I'm still using older Mac versions for testing and development and such for our commercial professional software things. And NVMe drivers are only available since uh, 10.12 or something, a Capitan or whatever that was. And if you want to go this route, and are adventurous. You can even fix this wake bug here. Someone who wrote here on Mac Rumors and in devs tutorial how to flash your BIOS and even decompiling and, and reassembling the BIOS with a non broken NVMe module to sleep, I guess. But as you can see, it's a little bit intense. I'm not even sure if I would do this. Maybe I would only do this for a YouTube video. Given how much is involved here, I would probably not do this just for the fun or something, only for some YouTube subscribers and AdSense. Anyway, so there you have it, the in-depth overview, the ultimate guide to Apple's proprietary SSDs. Given that I need an extremely special Snowflake SSD, not really sure if I will continue this upgrade. Maybe I just take this money and give it to some PC vendor for a totally new machine. I hope you learned even more. And I hope to see you soon for the next videos to come.